So we said we will be talking about reinforced masonry walls under out-of-plane loading uh, using the 2016 masonry code, although I'll address the um, earlier editions and some of the changes that have happened. Um, so just a couple resources. Uh, reinforced masonry engineering handbook is a great um, resource for masonry design as well as the uh, code masters. So just mention those. An outline of what we will be doing today is that we will uh, have a little introduction. I'll talk some about out-of-plane loading, just a brief summary of some of the recent changes to the masonry code, then go through the strength design procedure, because masonry actually has both strength design and allowable stress design. So go through strength design. We'll take a break, our first break. Then after the break, we'll talk about allowable stress and just some issues of walls under seismic loading. And then another break, and after that, we will talk about the moment magnifier method, which is uh, useful for walls with openings and a few other uh, situations that we'll mention. Finally, just mention a little bit on anchoring of the walls, and particularly anchor bolts, and uh, some things that have changed in the 2016 masonry code. Um, so just an introduction. And we'll look at that. First of all, uh, just a little bit about um, out-of-plane loading. Uh, there's lots of questions that sometimes get asked in terms of out-of-plane loading, design of um, not just masonry walls, but other walls. Um, of course, the main wind force resisting system uh, loads, wind loads would be used for shear walls. With out-of-plane loads, some people say to use the um, main wind force resisting system loads. I tend to use a component and cladding loads. It gets a little complicated because you have the out of plane loading and then usually some sort of roof loading and off, often an uplift actually um, for of course uh, um, low slope roofs and uplift here and which forces do you use. I tend to use the main wind force resisting system to find the uplift loads over large area components and cladding to find the out-of-plane loads, although other people do um, various things. The real issue is sort of this parapet here that, uh, of course, we have large loads for designing it. What loads do we use for the wall, sort of, if we're getting the reinforcing in here? Some people uh, don't ignore the parapet. That's being very conservative. Um, and actually, the parapet load is reducing the, the moment here in the mid height of the wall so I tend a lot of people just extend the wall loading on up but certainly there is not complete consensus on that. For seismic loading then actually if you look at the first mode then the uh, shape of the wall then if you have a parapet the parapet's actually um, giving a load in the opposite direction there which would actually sort of increase the moment there. Um, there's, of course, also higher modes contributing, so a lot of people just ignore the parapet load there. Um, don't have any complete answers to those, but just a uh, brief discussion on loading before we get going. And also then, uh, most masonry walls are modeled as simply supported walls. Um, so you have a uniform out-of-plane load and then some sort of moment at the top of the wall there. Um, so you get a mo shear moment diagram that looks something like this. And you can actually calculate the location of the maximum moment and the maximum moment. Although for most practical masonry design, just using WL squared over 8 plus M over 2 is sufficient. This third term contributes very little. In fact, it's hard for me to come up with a good practical example where that third term contributes a lot. So again, just a brief background loading before we um, sort of get into uh, some of the design of it. Um, just to go through briefly a history of some of the changes related to um, out-of-plane design. Uh, going from the 2008 to 2011 masonry code, in allowable stress design, there was the removal of the one-third stress increase and recalibration of stresses. So um, we, we did a lot of work there. 
In strength design, we changed the formula for calculating the nominal moment in strength design under out of plane loading. We'll look at this equation in more detail later on. This used to be, the terms here in the um, red area used to be just P sub U. Really, that was wrong. Really, this, as I'll show later, is just uh, getting the interaction diagrams. So this should be P sub N or really P sub U divided by phi. So we added the divided by phi there.